Welcome to Recon Wrestling Talk. I'm your host, Luis Rodriguez, and this is the Raw Recap Show. So let's get right into it. Monday Night Raw is the 30th anniversary, or as so labeled, Raw XXX. And right away, we jump right into one of the biggest names in professional wrestling history, Hulk Hogan. The first thing I noticed about Hogan was his lack of response from the crowd. I mean, geez, they wanted nothing to do with him. But, you know, I think that in this era of professional wrestling and professional wrestling fans, you have to be held accountable. And people just aren't going to turn a blind eye anymore. I mean, that it's a paid live event, and for Hulk Hogan to not get the pop that you would necessarily think, I mean, wow. I think it speaks a lot to how terrible he did, you know, how terrible the things he did was. I love the promo at the beginning, you know, for the 30th anniversary Raw recap. I thought it was wonderful. All the vignettes of the old school stuff. I mean, The Rock coming back for hosting WrestleMania. Triple H's return on Monday Night Raw after injury. Cody Rhodes' return at Media. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin in the bedpan. The Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair arrest segment. I mean, there's so many things in Monday Night Raw that we can just jump all over. One of my favorite things is definitely um, the highlight reel. With Chris Jericho announcing the newest draftee to Monday Night Raw and it being John Cena. I'm not the biggest John Cena fan, but I knew right then and there that there was a huge shift in wrestling. Because at the moment, the Raw champion was Batista. And right after he won the championship, they immediately swapped them. And it was definitely eye-opening to me. Because at that time, Monday Night Raw was the flagship show. It's not anymore because, honestly, having SmackDown on Fox, having Roman Reigns on Fox, having Becky Lynch on Fox, that is the flagship show now. So we jump right into the first segment of the night, which was the Tribal Court. And I loved how amazing Paul Heyman is getting the crowd to react to him the way they did. I mean, clearly the moment he grabbed the microphone being in Philadelphia, they were going to chance for ECW. And what did he do? He gave them that love and then ripped it away. (laughs) My God, he just does this amazing job with mic work. He is a genius with that thing. I love his little Brock Purdy nod too. Coming from a Niners fan, I think that's hilarious. But... I also liked how he was able to dress down Sami Zayn. And then right when Roman is about to give up on Sami Zayn, here comes the unlikely hero in Jey Uso with his own little package, his own evidence to save Sami Zayn. But then we get a little wrinkle. See, Roman doesn't want to see Sami. He lets him stay in the bloodline, but he doesn't want to see him until Saturday, until the Royal Rumble. I wonder why. And he says he needs to prove himself. So, I guess we'll see. Personally, I'm not about this whole Sami Zayn fiasco. I know people love him. To me, he's kind of a Mick Foley 2.0. I know it's really sad to make comparisons to to the legends of the past, but I can't help but do it in professional wrestling. But I do love how Sammy is over organically, just like the way Foley was. I'm just a bigger fan of his life mate, I guess I would say, Kevin Owens. Just like I was a bigger fan of The Rock in the early 2000s and 90s. Okay, so the first match of the night, we get the Judgment Day versus the Usos for the Raw Tag Team Championships. I thought this match was really good. Dominic is coming into his own, further and further into his progression in professional wrestling. He's doing a great job with minimal things right now. I can tell that his focus is on his character work, 
which is super important in this day and age. Because as, you, as you've heard and a guy like Ricochet say that work rate doesn't matter to the guys in the back. You can tell that in WWE, it doesn't matter if you're one of the best wrestlers in the world. If you don't have a character, it's not going to work. Your character needs to come through. And he's doing a great job. One of the guys that I feel like gets a knock for this on so many levels is Mustafa Ali. Yeah, he's a decent in-ring worker, but his character's just not there. And he's not over with the crowd, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I've been to paid live events, and there's no reaction for him. There's nothing on the internet freaking out about him not being over. There's no hashtags. Nobody's buying his t-shirt that's on WWE Shop. Nobody's... No one... But the people on TikTok are complaining that Mustafa isn't getting his shot. But those of us that actually watch professional wrestling every single show, every single week, we know that he's gotten multiple opportunities. I mean, I'm talking over and over and over. So I love how Dom has made it his mission to work on his character. Even this uh, Michael Scott or Prison Mike or however he's doing it, it's transitioning beautifully to the main roster. Damian Priest is that dude. He is doing an amazing job. I got lucky enough to see him at Hershey, and I can tell you, the way he carries himself in a professional wrestling ring, the little things that he does, how he like looks over at certain parts, he kind of gives direction to Dom in the middle of the match. His rapport with Rhea Ripley, it is a great thing that we're watching. The Usos come out on top of this match. They do a great job of um, playing up to the whole Roman Reigns and Bloodline and Sami Zayn thing. We get Jimmy who gets an injury, can't perform in the match, can't compete. And then Sami Zayn takes his spot. Because if he doesn't, they have to forfeit the titles. So Sami Zayn, once again, looks like the hero. This is such a great way to move Sammy into that upper echelon. And what I think it's doing is it's giving us Sammy Zayn as the possible foil to Roman Reigns as a way for him to drop one of the titles. Because I wouldn't be surprised if Roman walks out of Mania with zero championships. Now, do I expect that to happen? Absolutely not. Roman is just so over. And at this point, he can't drop the Universal Championship. He needs to keep it going. I do believe Damian Priest, unfortunately, will fall under the category of Razor Ramon, Kurt Henning, and Owen Hart as a guy who never holds the top title in the company. If you notice at the end of their match after the bloodline goes over, Sammy staring at the SmackDown titles. I think that's a way to let us at home and let the audience there know that he might be coming for these titles. And he probably sees a weakness in the Usos. That is hilarious to say, but I love it for storyline purposes. The reason I think it's funny is because I think the Usos are the best tag team walking the planet. There is no one close. In my personal opinion, and no, this isn't hyperbole, I have said this before, and I will have my buddy Tyler on here. I I believe that the Briscoes are probably the second best tag team in the world. We'll never get a chance to see that now, but still... 
the Usos and the Briscoes to me are top level tag teams. I know people want to throw the Bucks in there and I get it. They're just a little too cartoony for me. They're more of a PG-13 version of the Hardy Boys. Personally, the top star of the Judgment Day, though, is Rhea Ripley. And if you don't believe so, I think you're just not watching. Because Rhea, to me, is the top female superstar on Monday Night Raw. She is phenomenal. Now, do I think that eventually we're going to see a foil to her join the bloodline? Maybe. I'm hoping it never happens. I know the names that everybody wants. Tamina, Nia Jax, or Naomi. I just believe that Rhea's in a class of her own. Rhea has put herself in such a small amount of time in that category with Becky, Bailey, Charlotte, and Asuka. Oh, let me not forget Bianca because, wow. It, it's crazy to say that Rhea's the top star on Monday Night Raw on a roster that has probably the most talented in-ring performer in terms of female competitor that we've ever seen in Bianca Belair. And here is my little nugget, my favorite part of the past couple of weeks. L.A. Knight. This dude is awesome. And if you've watched him in TNA, you know he can work as well. But the fact that he's not even a top name, but he gets the crowd to to chant with him, to say his catchphrases. I, I think it's great. And I think it's perfect for him to get the rub of Bray Wyatt. We know he's not going to win the feud, or at least I don't think. But they have kind of um, screwed over Bray in the past, so we'll see. But I love how Eli goes out there, cuts his little promo, throws his little dig at Bray, requests a legend, and then the legend of all legends come out. The Undertaker, the American badass, comes out, and L.A. Knight plays that heel to perfection. Talks about taking down Taker, sending him into, sending Undertaker to the Undertaker, which I thought was such a good line. All to have him run away. It's just really good. I like to compare L.A. Knight to Diamond Dallas Page because that's what I think he is. I think he's a diamond in the rough. I think he's a guy that people don't realize how good he is. Just like in my era, we didn't realize how good Diamond Dallas Page was. But clearly we have that little segment with The Undertaker and Bray where he whispers something. And I don't believe that we'll ever get that quote that he tells them. I don't think we'll ever know what he says. I think it'll take years, maybe after retirement, before he actually admits what he said. Kind of like Austin and Rock at the end of WrestleMania 19, where they kind of have their little moment after the match, and Rocky tells them what he tells them, but they didn't tell us until years down the road. So here we go. As you can sense in my tone of voice, I'm a little frustrated at this next part. I went back and watched Raw twice. And I felt like there could have been other things cut from Monday Night Raw. There was at least 10 to 15 minutes of wasted on-screen time for Legends or... Wrestlers that didn't need to be on the Raw 30 show. So, Becky Lynch and Bayley have this match advertised for, for a week. They keep showing us the little promo at the bottom of the screen during other matches. All to have the match be cut short 
because the bloodline went over. And now you can't be mad at the bloodline. It has Roman Reigns, the face of the company. But as I said a couple of minutes ago, there was 10 to 15 minutes of fat that they could have cut. I don't know why they didn't do it. Becky and Bailey are two top stars. And as much as I want to sit here and tell you how much I love Bailey, I don't need to tell you what Becky Lynch means to wrestling, what she means to women's wrestling, what she means to Raw, to SmackDown. She's at the top of her game. No one comes close to her. In terms of Becky Lynch and popularity, the only person that's more popular than she is in the entire company is Roman Reigns. It's unfortunate. But I like the way they played it. You know, damage control takes her out. So it was almost like we were never going to let Bailey get into jeopardy. But what they've done in this era is they've created a hashtag. Because if you go on your Twitter, now there's a hashtag, women deserve better. And it's attributed to WWE. Well, maybe we get an evolution too out of this. Who knows? We've gotten great things out of fans being angry. And I'm not going to go into the ones that piss people off, like Brian being added to the main event match with Edge and Roman, or Brian not winning the 2015 Rumble, but there is a common theme there. <clears throat> what I will say is we did get evolution. We did get the call up for Charlotte, Sasha, Becky, and Bailey. Well, Bailey came a couple months later. So here's hoping. Fingers crossed, people. Well, the next match of the night is Bobby Lashley. And Austin Theory. And the match was okay. I love how Bobby Lashley and MVP are teasing. Reuniting. But... Will the fans be accepting this second time around? I hope so. Because I love them. I loved Bobby as WWE Champion. I believed he was everything we wanted. I believe he was everything that we wanted Brock Lesnar to be as WWE Champion. Only for the simple fact that he was there. He showed up every week. He defended the title. He beat the crap out of people. And then you have the Hurt Business. Winning the tag titles. That's great. Because we have a, a young guy in Cedric Alexander. We have Shelton Benjamin being put back into where he feels comfortable in the tag division and of course MVP being able to talk which is what he's great at so after that match we have Brock Lesnar come out pretty much making his I would say appearance known not appearance I'm sorry pretty much making what he wants known, which is Bobby Lashley. He wants Bobby Lashley. He wants that rubber match. He beat Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley beat him for the WWE Championship. I think we need a third match. I think this needs to squash at WrestleMania. Don't be surprised if, because of their names, they wind up closing out night one. Although I do think that the WWE Championship will close out night one. But I don't want people to be angry if that's what we get. Just be happy. Bobby Lashley deserves this. Anyone who doesn't believe that Bobby Lashley deserves to be in the spotlight hasn't been watching wrestling for a while. Because from the moment he left the first time and went to TNA and remade himself as the boss, Bobby Lashley, to come back to beat The Miz... He definitely deserves to be in that spotlight with Brock Lesnar. And I love it because what we've known from rumors, speculations, articles, is Lesnar doesn't just work with anybody. So he must really have an appreciation for Bobby Lashley. He must love working with him. That's pretty much how Raw ends. There's a couple things I didn't go over, like Ric Flair introducing Charlotte Flair. I think that was kind of more so to get Ric Flair on. And to kind of 
kick off, I guess you would say, the Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville feud. But I think that's probably going to be Charlotte's match at Royal Rumble. We did get um, a Bianca and Alexa Bliss moment out of that. Oh man, I gotta say, Alexa Bliss, as this character, has been phenomenal. She has been everything we all wanted Bray Wyatt to be, and then so much more. The way she's able to look into the mirror and essentially be talking to herself, but we're supposed to feel like she's talking to Bianca. My God. She is scary. And it is awesome. It is just phenomenal. I wanted to end this podcast talking about Cody Rhodes. I mean, Cody effing Rhodes, man. I am so excited to see what happens. I'm hoping Triple H lives up to his quote, where sometimes the obvious answer is the one right in front of you. Because Cody winning the Rumble... Cody winning the WWE Championship at WrestleMania is exactly what people want to see. And this has been a big fear of mine dating back to the rumors starting about The Rock and Roman. Because of what we saw with Daniel Bryan. Because of what we saw with Kofi Kingston. Because of what we saw with the women's evolution. Fans are not just going to sit back and take any shit anymore. They want what they want. And right now, you can tell they want Cody Rhodes. So I really hope we get this. I, I, I want to get, you know, Cody Rhodes and Roman out there. I want Cody and his wonderful mic skills going one-on-one with Paul Heyman. I want Roman Reigns to look like the guy who's just going to beat him only to have Cody get that win, raise the championship. I, I think it is honestly one of the best stories in wrestling and we haven't even gotten it yet well let me know if you agree that has been my raw recap i know i missed the dx moment but i thought it was lackluster but real quick dx comes out gunther comes out with his crew they have a back and forth and then seth and the street profits come out to save them they have a match it was okay But I absolutely loved Monday Night Raw. The only thing that I wish is that we would have gotten that cage match because I think they would have stolen the show. If you like the show, you can find me on Spotify or you can follow me on TikTok. That's Boricualu. That's B-O-R-C. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't even know how to spell. B O R. I C U A dot L O U Boricualu. Interact with me. Let me know how you feel. Before I go, I just want to say rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. We'll miss you. One day I'll do a show about you. Right now, the wound is too fresh. But thank you so much for listening. And until next time, this is Lewis. I'm out. <laughs>